All right, all right, all right. It's about time we just got back started. Let's see here. Um, okay. All right. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Um, it is Nico Bean. And we are back. Uh, it's been a long time. Um, I haven't been on here. I've been trying to get some things. Well, I've had technical difficulties for some people that don't know. Um, I've been trying to figure out this technology aspect when it comes to Google. Sometimes it's confusing. And sometimes it's a learning experience, but I'm back. Uh, I'll be going back to my regular schedule, and I am about to drop some new content. Still have some recording to do, but um, I'm just trying to get my fan fiction series together. I've been saying this for the longest time, but I have really been trying to go at it. I've started new projects in the midst of still doing the same ones, and it's been a journey. But like Planet Fanatics, I'm still trying to get back to my audience. Um, even though it's small, I have been growing while I've been away because I've promoted my stuff to people that I know. Um, I'm one subscriber away from making a milestone of 150 subscribers. So please like, share, subscribe, like this live, share it with anybody that you know of that likes the same things that I and other uh, creators do. Um, and yeah. Uh, I would just go off the dome here. Uh, I've been reading a lot of stuff lately when it comes to uh, Marvel and um, what they've been doing. Um, I'm not going to go into detail. I might. I don't know on this stream. I'm just trying to <laughs> get back into the swing of things. But um, one thing that I've been looking at is how they're trying to piece together their phase five. And of course, we just got through the writer's strike. Uh, I do believe there was an article. I think I could pull it up here. I might try to do that. I ain't gonna leave y'all in the dust like that. But um, I do believe that there is now a, uh, The writer strike has just ended, I believe. Uh, it is right here. Writer strike is over. Um. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Right here. This is from NPR News. All right, I'm gonna show it to y'all right here. Give me a second. All right, here we go, right here. So the writer's strike is over. Hollywood, this is from NPR News. Um, the Hollywood writer's strike is over, but the actor strike can drag on. Here's why. Um, well, let's check it out. So movie and television writers are overall delighted with how things turned out in the recent contract negotiations with studios. I think that we got everything that we really, really wanted. Writers Guild, East President Lisa Tekuchi Cullen told the still striking performers at a rally in New York for the Actors Union sag after a few days ago. We didn't get everything and you guys won't either, but I think you're going to get most of it. As sag after leaders head into talks Monday with the big Hollywood studios, the union's members are hoping for as a favorable, a favorable a deal as the writers union managed to secure with the studios last week. But the months of strikes may not be over as fast as some people think. Okay. We've got a great negotiating team, said actor Jeff Rector whose credits include Star Trek, The Next Generation, and American Horror Story, among 
many other films and TV shows over a career spanning more than 40 years. Hopefully it will be resolved rather quickly now that the writer's strike has been resolved. Entertainment industry experts are also hopeful about a speedy end to the strikes, which began in May with the Writers' Union, the Writers' Guild of America, WGA. The Actors' Union went on strike in July, and, oh wow, many NPR employees are members of the site. All right, but anyway, so that's one thing. Um, and to be honest with you, there is a lot of stuff that, that I think that writers and directors have when it comes to this. I do believe that the reason Let me say it like this. I think Disney should have had their stuff together before this strike happened. Um, I do believe in this decade, we've had two strikes since, I was, since I've been alive that I just found out about. One was in the early 2000s, uh, I think close to 07, maybe 08. And now we have this one. So it's come to a part, it's come to a, I don't want to say full swing, where you had one time where people were striking. I don't know what it was for. It's probably for the same things that they're striking for now. But it's got to a different aspect to where the entertainment industry got bigger when it comes to VFX, um, other things in regards to studios expanding themselves and doing a whole bunch of different things when it comes to storytelling, um hiring different people that actually do the homework when it comes to culture and whatnot um i was listening to uh the third episode of the podcast that i plan on listening to which is the wakanda forever podcast and i was just getting the sense that they have people that do character bibles of course there's character bibles but then there's also a setting bible and what i mean by bible is they actually find um they do their homework and they try to basically put together what is supposed to be in the movie and how they go about doing things to make it authentic and i guess close to a real world aspect of what a fictional world would be like in the real world and so i believe that for now there's been a deal been made in the sense that people are not going to settle for less when it comes to them doing work for these big studios like universal marvel um uh abc all these other things that people are a part of and now um now that we um have a sense of what the MCU is supposed to be in phase five. Um, I don't know. I really don't. As a lot of you guys know, in the part of the uh, crowd that we, that I'm a part of the recast, the child of nation. Um, I would just say you wouldn't have these problems if you actually kept the main character from black Panther, because you, you precedented everything. You put everything in one basket. When that basket sort of fell through with that hole that was left in the second movie, you moved on. You made the decision what you made. You started to set a stone. And then you say it's canon. So you're saying that the king of a nation that is basically the smartest person on the planet, but didn't get to show it because you decided to kill him off. I'm not going to go into those people. I'm just trying to get back at the swimming things. But uh, we got two people in here. Thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah. I might do a Q&A one day. I might do Q&A Saturdays. Yeah. I might do, yeah, I'm going to do Q&A Saturdays just to see if you guys got any questions for me. But, um, Hmm. What else has been happening? 
Oh, uh, the Aquaman 2 trailer just dropped a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I'm going to pull that up. Aquaman 2 trailer, just for, uh, the Aquaman 2 trailer for the second movie for Aquaman 2 just dropped not too long ago. Yeah, and that comes out this December. Yeah, it does. Uh, let's see here. Yep, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom trailer. Pull it up right here. Let's do it like this. All right. And I was very, I was like very surprised by this. I was thinking I saw the teaser trailer. Four then, years ago, I was basically in. All right. But like I was saying, the trailer for this movie came out not too long ago, and I was very surprised because, as you guys know, they came with the Flash, that didn't do so well. But I believe, and I was talking to my, uh, I I shared this on uh, Twitter, where um, when well, no, no, I shared it on Facebook. I said that if this movie does the numbers that it did for the uh, first movie, and it washed everything out of the water where where it made almost the same amount of money that black panther did and i'm seeing similar things to this but i'm, I'm gonna let y'all watch it because we're gonna watch it together because it's showing similar things but i will say this amber heard is in this one <laughs> yeah amber heard is in this movie she doesn't die i hopefully hopefully she doesn't die her character doesn't die because i don't i don't want to see mary cured off i actually like mayor because Mera was basically Aquaman's boo. Like, he has a love interest. It's funny how in the real world, we're trying to say we don't want Amber Heard to be able to um, have jobs or whatever. We hate on Amber Heard. But how's she going to pay Johnny Depp back if she ain't got no money? <laughs> because she was broke after that trial. But, um, but yeah, let's watch this for a second. Four years ago, I was basically unemployed. A wanderer with no home. But now, I'm a husband and a father. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know how you did it, Pops. My job was a little less stressful than yours. Oh, yeah. I finally got a job. I'm the king of Atlantis. Half a billion people from every known species in the sea call this place home. But that doesn't mean they all like me. I'm gonna kill Aquaman and destroy everything he holds dear. I'm gonna murder his family and burn his kingdom to ash. be stopped for a global meltdown is okay. imminent. Let me pause this right quick. Uh let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me do this right here. We gotta close some things before let me just do this right quick. All right. So All right, I'm going to restart this. All right. I think I know someone might be able to help us. Ooh, you look rough. The job of brother has fun. Do not call me, brother. I cannot believe you let this happen. Yeah, well, I hate this job. True king builds bridges, right? <laughs> True king builds bridges. <laughs> we need to find Manta. He's different now. He's stronger than before. It's the Black Trident. During King Atlan's time, there were seven kingdoms. 
trident was a curse upon them all. The trident's dark magic is spreading. He means to end the bloodline. I don't know what lies ahead, but we can't leave our children in a world without hope. You're not as bad at this as you think. If you lead, the Seven Kingdoms will follow. Okay. All right. So... Okay. Well, here's that. So, we have, once again, another DC movie coming at the end of this year. Now, we just had Blue Beetle. I've not seen Blue Beetle. I've not seen Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I've not seen a lot of movies that came out this year. Um, I haven't even seen Equalizer 3, but what my main goal is to try to at least go see a movie every Tuesday because it's five dollars to get Tuesdays and try to react to them and give my reaction and try to like break it down. Um, this is supposed to be one of the last movies from the Snyder Cut or the Snyderverse, and my opinion was. Once again, you bring in James Gunn to kickstart a whole nother universe. You say that this movie is supposed to be a um, basically like a last roll call for DC and its Snyderverse, and it's supposed to be an Elseworlds thing. Because that's what James Gunn said, Elseworld. My thing is, if this movie makes a billion dollars and it breaks in the amount of money that the first one did, like I said in the beginning, the executives at DC are probably going to be scratching their heads like, okay, so we do know it's a dark version of DC. We know that some things are being pushed around and basically shuffling the board with their options and james gunn hasn't even really started his um uh universe so he's coming in on the tail coat the uh the coattails of zack snyder's justice league which made a ton crap ton of money and now you're saying that these movies that have now come out and the second aqua movie is coming out it looks to me this is going to be pretty good. Even though you have the same, well, not the same villain. Uh, you have uh, Ocean Master as a quote-unquote uh, anti-hero. So he basically joins his brother. And he's following the story. Following the story from the first movie where he says, let's talk. And so he has his big brother or little brother. Um, what I don't like is he has a son, which that really does not make sense to me because like they did in the, uh, I, I'm seeing a, a current, a, um, a steady, uh, um, what is it? Not really trope, but a steady trend where in every movie you have a king has a son like that. He doesn't have any life adventures. He doesn't have any. Spectacular, adventure, spectacular adventures besides his origin story or what happens in his very first movie. And then, boom, all of a sudden, he has a son. Let's raise his stakes. He has to protect his family. He hasn't even faced many of the villains that he has in his entire venue of villains. We've only seen one villain that is, quote, unquote, his main villain, and that's a Black Manta. And... Well, basically, Black Manta and the Ocean Master. And even in that, nah. As a matter of fact, let's actually look here. Okay, so 
Come on, your kid. What's up, man? How you doing? Leave Aquaman separate from the stuff Gunn is doing. This way, the Snyderverse JLA can exist away from the gun goofiness. This is true, but my thing is this. If this movie, like I like I've been saying, if this movie makes over a billion dollars, it makes close to double of what it made in the from the first one. WB is going to have some very head scratching questions, and probably be probably go back behind James Gunn's back and bring Zack Snyder back to finish his entire um, DC lineage. Because to me, if I was uh, if I was um, at WB and I saw what James Wan is doing, because James Wan is known for making great movies, whether they be horror or super or superhero movies, period, he they're going to have to actually really think about what they're doing because of course this is the main thing is to make money. But at the same time, we're using properties that have been known for years and we're bringing in other people to basically give their version of what they want to do. But like I said in one of my videos with Blue, Blue's House, people are coming into these spaces, these creative worlds, and they're trying to put their personal lives into the films or the characters. The job is to take fiction, not really mold it into like a real world aspect, but give it a real world aspect, but not try to put your personal feelings into it. You try to breathe life into the characters that you have been reading about, try to put their stories onto the screens. If you want to make your own character, make your own universe. Don't try to come in and try to push your own agenda. I mean, I can't really say anything when it comes to doing certain things like that because the fan fiction that I have for that I want to bring into life it's not me pushing an agenda. It's me adding to the story that's already been established and making a different aspect from a different character. It's me adding, not subtracting. It's me trying to push, not necessarily a narrative, but a way to make people think from a different point of view and to bring about different, how can I say this? Basically different, storytelling different aspects of storytelling because i'm pretty sure if we got what we wanted or needed what well, was really wanted from black panther 2 and they actually did a doom war-esque movie where we saw him facing his name on and dr doom and moreland we'd pretty much be in a very good seating to where moreland would be able to face spider-man that would be pretty good um i do believe with aquaman though i believe people are, are setting themselves up just to be facing a certain amount of villains for aquaman because like i said before how many how many aquaman villains are out, actually out there that have not been shown and have yet to see the light uh let's see here there you go right here so black man to ocean master um uh the trench siren king shark uh let's see vandal savage scavenger atlan um uh, lord of mercy jesus come on kid that requires the studio to respect the source too this is true this is this is very true uh corn raft corn raft sounds like a very good villain um wow uh let's see corn raft is a dc villain almost like uh almost like um oh wow yeah corn raft is almost like uh almost like ocean master He's an octopus-like villain, I believe. Home Wrath is, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna show it to you guys. It sounds like Home Wrath is almost like, um, almost like the Joker in a, in a certain sense.
So, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clone Wrath would definitely be a good uh, villain for uh, Aquaman. Because if you look at this, you see Clone Wrath basically two pieces in Aquaman. It has Aquaman by the throat. Call him a false king. This would be great if you put Corbin Wrath in a uh, in an Aquaman movie. Yeah, this would be great. Yeah, that that, that would, I think Corbin Wrath should be the be the villain for the third or fourth um uh um uh, Aquaman movie if they decide to do it that way. Corbin Wrath would be a very great villain because if 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 my memory serves correctly. Corm Wrath and company. I think Corm Wrath comes from the come from the uh comes from the trench. I think that's where he comes from. Yeah. If uh, from what I just showed you and what the trench looks like, if you guys have watched Iron uh not Iron Man, but Aquaman, I think the trench and near in uh Corm Wrath, Corm Wrath could be the leader of the trench. And that way, they will be able to show the power of the trench and see how not really it's corrupted people because it's they said um, uh, in Atlantis was above water, and when they people decided to uh, when people had to adapt the um, the depths of the ocean, some were mut mutated into into basically. The monsters of the trench. Now it says here the another villain that is um uh um a adversary to um Arthur is King Nereus. King Nereus is one of the kings from the many uh realms, not really realms, of the kingdoms of Atlantis. And so and it says here that um uh King Nereus is supposed to be one of the basically biggest threats that um that uh oh my god <laughs> oh J Dub what's up man how you doing bro um serious threats okay I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show this one to y'all so let's see let's see let's see let's see this one right here uh let's see it. so king nereus it sounds like okay here we go right here king nereus is like i said a thorn in aquaman's side and he's always okay here we go there goes a look from the comics right here uh let's just read it together atlantis somehow still retained its monarchy system of governance even in the modern world which makes for a troublesome power struggle for Aquaman. He has enemies left and right, some of which are also his royal subjects. Um, Nereus is one of them, and he's quite a thorn in Aquaman's side. Do note that Nereus in the comic books is different from King Nereus in DC's Aquaman film. Uh, Nereus, being an Atlantean himself, shares the same physiology and capabilities as Arthur Curry. And he's also Mary's first romantic interest, okay? In fact, Nereus being the king of the underwater kingdom, Exibo, sent Mary to kill Aquaman. However, Mary didn't. She even became attracted to Arthur, much to Nereus' displeasure. Uh, okay. Wish I, I wish I would've seen that in Aquaman. That would've been great. Um, and here they have like a list of villains that, um, uh, that are basically in um okay okay J Dub, you talking you talking some you talking some sense right now saying you want to uh you want a thundercats movie well a thundercats movie would have to go along with a he-man movie i think that would be good too a he-man and probably i'd say a um 
What about? Uh, let's see. Uh, Masters Universe movie? That would be good. I think that would be great. Um, I do believe that there is a certain aspect of nostalgic. It's not uh, nostalgia when it comes to Thundercats, because, of course, that was a TV show that a lot of people grew up with. Also, um, Transformers, uh, which they've already done, and I think they're going to make another one, but I don't know when. Um, when Rise of the Beast came out earlier this year, I want to go see it twice. Um, it's a really solid movie. Uh, when I went to go see it the first time, I was blown away. Uh, there's a secret organization I thought was going to be in there, but they flipped it on its head and put a different one in there that was another well-known franchise um, that had Channing Tatum in it. I'm just, I'm not going to spoil it, but they had a Channing Tatum reference to it because he played in the very first one and died in the second movie. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, name it, name it in the comments, uh, in the chat. Um, I do believe that the... <laughs> all right, J Dub. I, I, all right, okay. You you a little ahead of me when it comes to cartoons, so I'm gonna give you that. Um, what was I saying? I think the biggest thing when it comes to making movies, and it all boils down to storytelling. Storytelling has a well. There's a, a, gener a generic ver a way of doing it, but there's also a uniqueness way of doing it because you can't just do the generic through and through because you get generic numbers in the box office. Um, I do believe that the best way to do a cinematic universe is to always keep the audience guessing because, I, to be honest with you, I really hated the fact that uh, as time progressed, people made money and people made hype off of basically leaks and spoilers and stuff like that. I don't believe you basically when and reason why people don't get on social media when certain movies come out is because they don't want people to spoil it for them. And even to the point where the studios and the actors and whatnot have always have like, I don't want to say trolled the audience, but like told the people. Do not spoil the movie. We want people to actually say, um, uh, yeah, you're right. It's not it's not like it was in the 90s or 2000s. So you're definitely right. Um, uh, but yeah, like I said, people don't want movies, especially superhero movies, because that's basically what the what the big uh, money, the big money um, uh, machine is right now, superhero movies. Even to the point where people are saying superhero fatigue, it's not really it's not really fatigue for superhero movies. It's super. It's fatigue for people not actually doing their homework on these characters and doing a due diligence when it comes to actually making a good story for the character. And if you're trying to adapt the story, do it the right way and don't do it your way. Do it the way that the story that you're trying to tell is a good way of saying the story. Because what you don't want is, like we always say, go back to Wakanda forever. You put your feelings into it and put a real life black man's death into a movie when it doesn't have to be. Because if from what I've heard and what I've, well, not really what I've heard, what I've done my research on, and you're telling me that you wanted Namor to see T'Challa, uh, bad story for T, you're right, come on, kid, bad story for T. You want to see T'Challa face off against Namor, you do know that happens in, in uh incursions when they're going against uh when they're trying to save the multiverse you have uh you're right they do why didn't they make a season no they did make season two yes they do why they didn't make a season two of luke cage that was a good show j dub they did make a season two of uh of luke cage you gotta go see it it's uh you gotta go look on uh netflix but the thing is luke cage is not on netflix no more this or Disney Plus. That's where you have to go find it. Um, now the when it comes to Marvel's TV shows for Netflix, they only made one season of uh of Jessica Jones, they only, they only made one season of uh Iron Fist, 
and they only made yeah only yeah one season of iron fist one season of jessica jones and um one season of uh the punisher now the way that i see it when it comes to those street level heroes um and even though they did the whole defenders thing i think to me if i was in marvel's shoes or if i was in kevin Feige's shoes i would have never had um oh yeah bushmaster yeah uh come on kid uh and, and, uh, and for my for my brother here uh bushmaster was a good villain now did bushmaster die in season two because i don't believe he did if Bushmaster didn't die, yeah, Bushmaster didn't die in season two. Um, the guy who played Bushmaster, if he was not playing Bushmaster, shoot, they're using they're reusing uh, uh actors in Marvel. Bring Bushmaster and make him Dr. Voodoo. That's what you can do. Make him Dr. Voodoo. Now you have Marsha Ali um uh playing, well, supposedly playing Blade, but I think he already walked off because he's getting to up in age and he wasn't i mean he's an award-winning actor and he wasn't trying to mess with all that bull crap because he's been in the movie industry for so long that he requires certain he was required respect for his time and his movie blade was announced back in 2019. we're darn near freaking 2024 and you still have not come out with anything when it comes to blade almost to the point where blade is now being pushed back so far indefinitely just like spider-man into the spider-verse 3 beyond the spider-verse that's the lid indefinitely due to the strike and now the writer strike is over all we're waiting for now is what's going to happen with the actors because the actors are the ones that bring life to these characters um nope bush monster is really hard to kill agree bond doctor agree on dr voodoo yeah because I, I believe Dr. Voodoo, Dr. Voodoo is basically a black version of Dr. Strange. His power levels are very different from uh, Dr. Strange, but it's still up there. What I'd like to see is, um, is there gonna be another Batman movie? I really hope there's not because I'm tired of Batman. That I did it. Look, they got the Batman out on, uh, on TV now. So I, I'm about to go watch that. <laughs> I'm about to go watch that for free. I didn't pay that. I didn't pay to go see that movie. Because when the Batman, I was like, really? Another Batman movie? I can't do nothing with Black Lightning, but I can do something with Black Man. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, but Like I was saying, Dr. Voodoo, I believe uh, Dr. Voodoo, if you did a Dr. Voodoo standalone film, I think that would, uh, that right there could be another billion dollar movie. Because if you did your due diligence with Dr. Voodoo and have him cross over with Dr. Strange and Wong and all the sorcerers, I believe that would be a segue to possibly making a Mystic Arts team. Probably lead to the Defenders. The other version of the Defenders, not the ones from not the ones with Luke Cage and um uh not the one with Luke Cage and um uh, Jessica Jones and all the other street level um, uh, big heads, but the defenders that had Doctor Strange, uh, the Hulk, um, I believe it was Thor. Yeah, I think it was Thor. And the other version of the defenders, I believe that would be a good way to segue into defenders. Of course, it, it wouldn't be um, a comic book accurate defenders, even though it could, because you have the Hulk, you have Thor, you have all these components that go to the original team that came before the street level of uh defenders i just believe that um yeah <laughs> okay you mean the real defenders uh i guess you could say that i don't know what you're talking about but okay um i do believe that um if you dive deep into like the lore of dr strange and dr voodoo and even to the point where once again it ties with wakanda um there would be a certain aspect because you got to think about certain things uh the way that their power structure comes from it comes from uh i think who's going to play batman j-dub i don't know 
come on, your kid. <laughs> you might want to help him out there because uh, I haven't heard anything about who they're picking. As um, yeah, he hasn't been cast yet. He really hasn't. But um, I think that the way that uh, if like I was saying, you go back to how everything is set up for the power structure from sorcerers to uh, people that are imbued with the powers of different deities and um, stuff like that. Uh, I think the way that Dr. Voodoo could possibly dive into that is, of course, Voodoo is um, connected to Egyptian stuff and uh, not really Jamaican, but Egyptian stuff. But um, have him be able to get his powers from certain uh, aspects, almost like the Eye of Agamotto with Doctor Strange. You have um, the uh, Crimson Bands of Sidorak. You have um, a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, uh, Jada, what about a Mortal Kombat movie or a Street Fighter movie? Well, uh, if you pay attention in 2021, they came out with the remake of Mortal Kombat that made close to a billion dollars, I believe. Um, I'll pull that up right quick. Hold on. Let's see. So, Mortal Kombat. Let's see. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat. Uh, let's see. All right, here we go right here. So, Mortal Kombat was 2021. Um, oh wow. Well, it wasn't it was shown in movies, but only made uh 84.4 million dollars. And that was due to the fact that of course this movie came out during the pandemic, and um it was made to um basically please the Mortal Kombat fans. Now, Mortal Kombat was the, um, who would you cast as Brother Voodoo? Um, I would cast the dude, okay, hold on, I'll pull it up right here. The person that I would cast for Brother Voodoo is the person, like, like I said, um, and as a matter of fact, if you think about it, this guy who, uh, played Bushmaster played a certain character. Um, yeah, here we go right here. Mustafa Shakir, he played, he played, um, uh, Bushmaster for, um, for this movie. Now, uh, what other characters he's played? Um, I believe he played, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What other characters has he played? Um, Mustafa Secure. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Here. Let's see. Because I do know he played somebody. Hold on. Because I know he played um, a character that was the actual. Um, uh, let's see. Mustafa Secure. So, let me see here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, uh, let's see. Um, he played. He played some. Uh, he played one character that was. Um, let's see. No, let me see here. Let me see. Um, Voodoo Man. Let me see here. Okay, here we go. Right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Right here. He played a character on American Gods. That was uh he played Loa. Yeah, let me see here. He played um nah nah I know exactly what I yeah, right here, right here. 
he played Law, a um a voodoo uh shoot, here it is right here. Here we go, right here. And I'm saying that because he looks just like um the guy that played um dang what is it? Hold on, I'm gonna show this for sorry real quick. Give me a sec. He played a character that was, here it is right here, Law. He played a character that was um, also shown uh he played a character that was shown in um i think it was shown in the princess and the frog where he played um yeah let me see i'm gonna show this with y'all he played uh, he played a character, uh, they're called the Loa. It says here, the Loa are spirits of the voodoo, voodoo, voodoo religion. They act as intermediaries, intermediaries between the humans and Bondi. Um, yeah, here we go, right here, right here. He plays Baron Samidi. And it looks like he could play Brother Voodoo. He said, Baron Samidi, who is a god of the dead, death, magic, sex, and the underworld. But he's the life of the party and the chef at New Orleans Rowdy Le Conque Noir, where both the living and the dead, humans and gods alike, come to imbibe and dine. He enjoys the disruption and debauchery. Although married to Mam Maman Bridget and deeply in love with her, he has a joyous habit of stepping out on his wife. Okay. Um uh well there's that. Um shoot. But yeah, I think um from what I've seen here in this picture right here, um there's been a lot of people that actually have made uh Mustafa Secure the person to play brother voodoo i think he's the perfect casting for it um of course people have put him as the new t'challa if they were to actually get their heads on straight and try to find a super actor to replace shabit bozeman as t'challa may he rest in peace um i don't know The Baron Samidi Barros Samade. Is that French or is that, um, or is that, uh, or is that another language? I'm interested. Um, let's see here. Uh, let me go back to this. And I'm going to, hmm. I don't know what's y'all thoughts who would y'all cast as um i mean that's the only actor that i can actually picture that's playing brother voodoo um i don't know anybody that uh you guys know of that might be able to play um um brother voodoo but that would be my top choice my only choice actually to play brother voodoo um my thoughts on the uh whole situation when it comes to breaking down how to go forward with the uh oh french and creole okay cool all right cool uh the thing that i think about is now that we're close to the end of a strike what if i'm at the wakanda or black panther franchise or whatever franchise that i'm writing I'm getting my chips in order to basically come back to the table 
when it comes down to casting people, shoot, if we're just going to focus on the Black Panther franchise here now, um, if we're going to double down and not really double down, but screw our heads on straight, because if I'm Kevin Feige, if I'm Nate Moore, if I'm those two people, I'm thinking, okay, look, we messed up in the second Black Panther movie. What we can do is we can have a situation to where we go to Black Panther 3, and I'm pitching right now because I've been, even though I've been writing my fan fiction and I want my character to actually blossom, but I have to get my foot in the door and get my basically work list or my resume built up before I actually talk to Marvel. But then again, I don't know. I can start at Marvel. I can actually put my foot in the door and make it my voice known or yell loud enough to where they actually hear me to where they say, look, I actually have a good story that you can actually show on screen. Yes, I don't have any experience, but shoot. If I have a good story and I know my stuff, I read the comics, I've done what I need to do when it comes to actually doing my homework and adding on to, and have my character Bible ready for my character that I have already developed. And quote unquote, I don't have all the stories, all of what I know and I want to say, but I have a good vision of what he needs to do with the child. Um, um, yeah. If I'm Nate Moore, if I'm Ryan Coogler and company, um, I'm going to do the following things. One. I might have to do it. I might. I'm. I'm a. I'm a ruffle some feathers. I might have to go back against what I set up at the end of uh, Wakanda for Never, and do away with Toussaint. Might have to twist some heads, make some heads, uh, scratch some heads when say, per se, that T'Challa really wasn't dead, or he his um actually do a comic accurate thing, and say that his spirit. It's stuck in the in-between, like it was in the comics, where he was in a comatose state, not really a dead state. Have um uh brother voodoo, possibly. Um, but have brother voodoo, uh, let's see. Actually, have yeah, probably brother voodoo bring him back. Um, yeah, brother voodoo will bring him back. Because he has a connection with T'Challa before, off screen, off screen, he has a connection with T'Challa. Um, have him bring him back to the land of the living. Have uh, Nakia show her villainous side to where she agrees. Because if you if you paid attention to what Nakia was doing in the very first movie, her beliefs and lines, uh, her beliefs and her um persuasiveness to what T'Challa did with open up the country from the first movie. If Nakia would have never said anything like that, Wakanda would never been open up to the rest of the world. Point blank period. Um, I would have had a situation to where um, she goes back, she leaves Wakanda again, but she comes back, but she comes back in a secretive way to where she creates a cult to basically bring back Killmonger on the, uh, if, if, if you guys know this or pay attention to this, I wish Theo was in here. Um, have it to where um, the, uh, what is it? The, uh, dang, the altar that is in the comics, the uh, resurrection altar. And I think it was in Panther's Rage, probably. Yeah, I think it was in Panther's Rage. Um, have it to where Killmonger is brought back. He's given the uh, a quote unquote a um, what is it? synthetic version of the heart shaped herb, like he should have had because the heart shaped herb should have killed him in the first movie. Um, the heart shaped herb should have killed him and made him to where he would not be able to survive, survive the rituals. Um, I believe that. Uh, I believe that um, the way that you 
bring back certain characters, have it to where I don't know about how you would do Ramonda because they killed her in the second movie. I don't know how you how you would do that. Um, I do believe that uh, when it comes to bringing bringing back Ramonda or even bringing back Zuri, I don't know. Well, no, you can't bring back Zuri. He's already dead. He's been dead for a while now. So you might not be able to do that. But you definitely have to bring back Queen Ronda. Um, in the third movie, you plant seeds for uh, for showing the villains that you had in uh, Tommy C. Coates, um, A Nation uh, Under Our Feet. You plant seeds to do um, possibly a Disney Plus series leading to a movie for the intergalactic empire of Wakanda. You make it to where um, possibly we see a Guardians uh, crossover with the intergalactic empire of Wakanda because the Guardians galaxy probably don't even know that that exists. That's once again a secret uh, a secret uh, nation that's off the books. Probably find the planet where all of the vibranium is stored that of course, Wakanda only has a small piece, but Wakanda actually finds this is where you could establish the uh, the planet or find the planet or cre even create the planet to where all the vibranium comes from. Because I'm pretty sure that 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 um that planet that was, I guess, I don't want to say it exploded because it was a comet, but it might be. I don't know. But um, possibly have that. Establish that story. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else. Uh, oh, bring in the Hatu Suraze, make them known in the, in the MCU, have them to where we have the secret police. No, the war dogs, I don't believe, in my opinion, the war dogs is not enough. You can have you, basically those are just spies. The war dogs, uh, yeah, like I said, war dogs are spies. The Hatu Suraze. Are the secret police in Wakanda? They're the ones that actually are basically the FBI inside of Wakanda. Um, I do believe that uh, if you do that, have them cross over with the with the Dormilaje, that right there could have been a whole possibly a whole series you can make with the Hatut Zarazi because they are the special forces that guard the king at some points. Um, bring in the real White Wolf. Which is Hunter, the person that T'Chaka um uh that T'Chaka adopted. This has a similar story to what um uh the um Iron Fist had. Darren Brand, uh, uh, yeah, Rand, Danny Rand. His uh plane crashed into a mountain that was basically the um the mountain that was the uh oh shoot what is it called oh lord the um. Jeez, I can't remember it, but uh, the Iron Fist is the person, uh, he was created, he was trained by monks that were superpowered monks. And so, like the um, like Dr. Strange was trained by the Ancient One, have, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, the, like I said, the similar story that they had was Hunter crash landed in Wakanda. His parents didn't survive the crash, but he did. He was adopted by King T'Chaka while T'Challa was growing up. Of course, before he was killed by Claw in the original storybooks, in the original story. So you have T'Chaka have a, um, I don't want to say have a, like a, a Killmonger-esque story to where um, uh, you find out that Hunter has a um, uh, ties to the royal throne. But he's just a um, well, of course, the world, the people of Wakanda would not accept him because, of course, he's a white boy. But um, have it to where there was a white boy before <laughs> a, a white boy from uh, that was before um, uh, Bucky, even though they called him the white wolf, which I didn't like until because I didn't know what the white wolf was until I actually learned about it. Um, have it to where you can do it. Uh, if you want to do it, the the right secondary story or second film to where if the child finds out that he has a long lost brother, a stepbrother, 
Um, Hunter decides to come out of hiding, sir, per se. He's been in Wakanda, a a um a remote way, a remote uh, location in Wakanda, where he's a, been obser observing everything, and he has a his own following, his own group of people that um that stick with him and actually believe in what he is about. Have his own little organization, have him be the winter soldier of the whole entire family, to where he finds out that um he or shoot. Have it to where he could be working with Claw up until he was killed, or have him have him try to be the one to not really groom Claw to be not not groom but uh, bring back Claw. Have him have him supply the stuff to make him living sound. You could do that. Now that would be good. Have him take certain parts of the uh have certain uh more of our brain being taken away from Wakanda, and T'Challa has to basically fight hunter because he does not know i don't want to say he doesn't know but he knows but he hasn't seen him in a while so he knows he's part of the royal family because chaka brought him in and raised him and adopted him as his brother and so of course hunter's older than t'challa so you could have that um of course we have now a situation where shuri is supposed to be the uh authentic black panther but i don't uh, i i'd rather see her as uh just grio you could possibly have her and dr voodoo team up oh this is what i was gonna say uh manifold manifold is the one that helps to try to get into this jalia and to help bring back shuri you could flip that have shuri and uh Dr. Voodoo and Manifold go back and get T'Challa. What you could do is she gets stuck in the Jalia and Manifold be comic accurate from that point forward, have T'Challa and Manifold having to create that pathway to the Jalia to get Shuri back. Shuri spends most of the time in the Jalia with, with uh, Ramonda because as you know, in the comic books, when Shuri becomes Grio, she spends an extensive amount of time in a coma, but you could have her whole body and spirit in the Jaya, learning from Queen Amanda, learning the stories about Wakanda, learning the history, and she comes back with Grio powers, able to have that whole entire suit, because I'm pretty sure that suit could transfer over into the MCU. Um, boom. That's how you fix the the Black Panther franchise. Now, moving forward, you would have to have um, have your plans to make T'Challa the main uh, leader of the uh, Avengers. Uh, go about it to where I believe. Oh, this will fix the thing. Uh, this will fix a whole bunch of things because one, they've basically already uh, almost about to introduce the Ultimates. After the Marvels comes out in the in what was it November, yeah, when the uh, next month when the Marvels come out, that's basically going to be the Ultimates right there because you have uh, Monica Rambeau, Spectrum, you have Captain Marvel, you have Miss Marvel, uh, you have uh, I believe in the at the very end of that movie is going to be um, Blue Marvel introduced. A part of me hopes they do, and a party hopes they don't. Because if they do that and they don't do it the right way and make him subpar and try to basically make him weak and make him look crazy and stupid, no, I don't want that. No. Blue Marvel is a top-tier hero. He is nothing to be played with. You have to do his homework because he is older than all of those characters on that roster. He was around during the 60s. And what I mean by his, what I mean by the 60s, I mean his story, his backstory. He had on a mask because he's a black character doing superhero crap, saving people, saving white folks in the 60s. When the president found out who he was, found out he was a black man that had superpowers. Uh, what was it? Uh, it was Kennedy. Yeah, he met Kennedy. He exposed himself to Kennedy. Kennedy said, look here, bro. I thank you for your service. You are a black man in America. 
And if a lot of white folks found out that you are a black man under mask, there's going to be a problem. They're going to try to find you. They're going to try to kill you. Even though they can't, they will hate you because that's the time that's the time period he lived in. He was, uh, even though his power kept him young and to the day that he met T'Challa and he found out he was another, another black prime, uh, not really prime, but um, a, another strong black superhero that looked like him, that was able to have his same smarts and intellect as him, they were able to go about the way of creating a team that even Galactus was trying to get with. Because if you saw in the cover, you see Ultimus, uh, not Ultimus, but uh, Galactus having who in his hands? Black Panther, Captain Marvel. Um, what was it? America Chavez. America Chavez is over at uh, um, Palmataj training to hone her powers. So you have the ultimates. You have that whole entire team right there in your hands. Already basically in the MCU. All you got to wait for is the Marvel to come out. Now, granted, we don't know if this movie's going to do good. I hope it does. It looks okay, but the way that they're still pushing, we always like to call it the MCU, which you pushed in Black Panther Wakanda for never, which I didn't like because Wakanda is not about just female empowerment they're about male empowerment too um and plus it's the old government system it's not the same as the other ones um i do believe that um hmm. so you have okay you have the ultimates team coming because that's already been displayed my thing is you're trying to set up the young avengers but you really have you haven't had the time to develop the entire mcu story to where you can introduce the young avengers now granted you have a uh, quake and i'm going off the hinges here quake is supposed to come back or it's been rumored that she's supposed to make her debut in the mcu my thing is okay we canceled not really canceled but we ended the marvel uh agent shield series from abc we don't know what quake's been doing up until then um the inhumans was messed up uh we don't know where they are um the eternals movie that came out not too long ago i think it was 2019 uh that should have basically kicked off a whole bunch of other things especially when it comes to the x-men because the eternals were the ones who created the x-men and i'm sorry not eternals the uh celestials were the ones that experimented with the genome of certain humans turning them into mutants and so you had a different race of humans which were mutants you had the humans and then you had the um deviants so you have all these species and i do believe that we haven't even had um uh what's the word What's the word? Oh, Savage Land. You haven't even introduced the Savage Land because that's how a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> Come on, kid. Yes, Phase Four was bad. Um, my hope is when Phase Five is over with, we have it a, a an abundance of stuff that makes sense. And my thing is, you basically did a reverse for what you did for your first three phases you introduced thanos mid-phase you introduced the main bounty for phase five and six at the very beginning of the phase why why could you why couldn't you build up the suspense why couldn't you build up the questions like we did in the very first three phases of the move of the mcu why couldn't you do it like that you made it to where kane was rushed you made a black, you make King black, which you have Rich Richards is white. I don't understand that. I mean, to me, if you're going to do Fantastic Four, you don't even have them established yet because you're trying to figure out who you're going to cast. My opinion, you should have kept John Krasinski. You did fan service with that because you put him in Multiverse of Madness. Why couldn't you bring him over to 616? Because if, I'm, if memory serves me correctly, 
you could have had him, his wife, possibly Zach Afron, and some dude that played Ben Grimm. That, that's my fan cash right there. And I'm pretty sure the, the situation that's going on with Zach Afron, he would have taken that role. He would have willing to bite his teeth on that. Now, I've seen some other stuff where Chris Evans has been, of course, pushed to be to bring back his role of Mr. of uh not Mr. Fantastic, but um Human Torch. But we don't even know if he's gonna come back as Captain America. Because you say that he's old man cat now, he's stuck on the moon, or well, not stuck on the moon, but on the moon, uh doing sword. So either you're gonna make him young again, or you're gonna have old man cat that still could kick butt. Because what you showed in Endgame, you showed that he was just old and frail now. He went back, spent time with Kebby. I mean, not Kebby, but uh, Peggy. And lived his life. Had a happy ending. It seems to me that he was at that funeral. He, Of course, he outlived Peggy because Peggy died in the Civil War in 2016. So you have that. Um, I don't know how you would go about bringing back Captain America. As a symbol, you have Falcon as the uh, as as Captain America now, who holds the mantle of Captain America. He has the shield, he has the suit, all that, and you know, bag of chips. Uh, you have Spider Man now. Um, one thing I'm looking forward to is seeing how they actually push forward Peter's story. Um, now that he has the apartment, he's starting from scratch. He's doing all this. With his uh, with his with how they, Lord Jesus, I don't like how they did with with uh Spider Man in the No Way Home. You made everybody forget who Peter Parker was. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, our question is, why could you make everybody forget who Mysterio was? That would have been the best thing to do. Why'd you? Yeah, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I don't know. Um. Shoot, there's just so much stuff that needs to be done with the MCU. It's, it's. I'm not. I don't want to say depressing, but it. You got a lot of work to do, bro. Um, it's just a thing where people have to take in consideration that um, this is not a cake. This is not a cakewalk. If you're gonna do a cinematic universe the right way. Do it to where it pleases your fans and it pleases and pays homage towards those who made ways in the comic book industry. Um, I will say there are other teams that you could do, but you have to introduce certain teams that come before that. It, uh, Black Panther and the crew. Um, Luke Cage is already established. Uh, Misty Knight is already established. Um, <laughs> it really is aggravating. Come on, kid. You're right. It is aggravating. But see, it's a simple fix. But people don't want to. People don't want to do the work. People don't want to reciprocate. Listen, they don't want to have their ear to the ground and listen to what the fans are saying. If you pick me, I'm going to show you and try to push common sense when it comes to these things. Because if you want to make money, you start with Black Panther the crew, or like I said when I said earlier, when you have Doctor Voodoo. You have a um, like I said, Black Panther crew. You can introduce X Men by bringing in Storm. Uh, you can bring um, Misty Knight, uh, Luke Cage. You bring all these people and have them. Uh, oh, also Manifold. Manifold is uh, Manifold is X Men, and Storm is X Men. You could have those two black um uh characters. Have them come over to Wakanda. Try to find out where uh, Black Panther is. Oh, no, yeah, where uh, um, T'Challa is. They go about trying to find Dr. Voodoo. Um, Luke Cage goes to visit the Sanctum St. Paul in New York. Uh, he has him contact Brother Voodoo because Brother Voodoo has ties or has prior history with, um, uh, with Stephen. Because Steven, of course, uh, like he said in um, in Thor, love not Thor, love Thor before Thor Ragnarok, he has people that are a list of threats to um, the world or the mystic world. 
And so what you can have is you can have um you can have brother voodoo be on that list and he goes and finds out about brother voodoo and finds out that he's not really a threat he's just a person that's like him that is in the mystic arts so you have that um when it comes to uh iron fist you could have him go against a uh, white tiger you could have um shoot if you want to you could introduce the agents of wakanda i mean i'm going back to black panther stuff here now but i'm if you if you just see how i'm trying to piece together a potential if like I, like they were planning on doing with the mcu with the child being the main leader of things you have all these teams that are centered in wakanda centered around the black panther the superhero and have it to where he is basically i don't say the second version of nick fury because he's the one that is leading these things behind the scenes um even to the point where you could establish that like uh like they did in um in the first black panther movie they have schools that are uh he said the outreach program outreach program in new york we know that there is a wakandan embassy to where T'Challa goes frequently when he has to do business with the Avengers. And that was in the cartoon series. You only have that in the MCU because what you basically put out was um, Enemy of the State that you set up in the very beginning or at the end of uh, the first Black Panther. Now, I'm not going to put out my idea that I created or that I've developed or that I came up with when I was in one of my uh, my second episode if you guys go back watch my second episode there was a thought that sparked i might reveal it soon i don't know i'm gonna do it with my fan fiction uh character for black panther but there is i believe uh, i don't know i have it i also have to read um eve yeah eve ewing's uh black panther run because i do believe she's still doing it and i think that um I don't know if there's if she's on the fourth one or the fifth one yet. I have to check. But there is going to be. Uh, I believe they've I think they set this up in uh um John Riddle's run. Uh yeah. John Riddle. Oh, I'm sorry, not John Riddle, Tom Riddle's run for uh his run when he did um Wakanda versus America. I think that you could have a scale to where Wakanda is fighting the entire world. You could do that. You could have a storyline to where, uh, and I'm talking about MCU, to where, of course, they showed in the very first, um, after the funeral for, well, I don't, well, I don't, I'm not even going to pay attention to that. But when Wakanda was trying to share their knowledge with the world, and you saw the French try to take the vibranium, you saw Dormelage beat up the French and bring them to the UN. And Queen Ramona said, let this be a uh, a show of strength. If you guys do this to us again, we will not be acting so cordially. Um, but as we all know, if the child was in that setting, they'd be probably come, come up in body bags. Because Wakanda don't play that type of mess. They're the, literally the only country that has not been colonized in Africa. And you guys are trying to take, we're trying to lit, we're trying to create bridges. They are trying to steal from us, basically. Trying to steal our resources. They're strong enough to where they don't play that crap. They're a powerful nation. So you have that. Um, I'm gonna switch over to DC right quick. Uh, like I said with Aquaman, if this makes over a billion dollars, you got to bring Zack Snyder back because for me, I want to see what he wanted to do with Green Lantern. I want to see what he would probably do with uh with Wonder Woman, uh, pushing her story forward. Um, I want to see him bringing a character that we haven't seen yet. I want to see him bringing Green Light, uh, Green uh Green Arrow. I want to see him bringing um. Who else? Uh, Kid Flash. Well, no, no, I'm sorry. 
Don't do Flash because, well, I don't know about that. But um, hmm. that's that would be quite interesting. But, yeah. I'll have a Q&A uh, for whatever you guys want to ask me about my fan fiction or whatever products that I'm doing, uh, pro projects I'm doing. I just recently started a Tron, Tron fan fiction. I don't know if any old school Tron people out there know about Tron. Um, I have started a Tron fan fiction. I have started a uh, a Pacific Rim fan fiction project that I think would be good. Um, my mom says if I get in, when I get into industry, I'm going to take it upon myself to try to fix some of the stuff that happens that's in these certain stories. Because one, one, I'm not one to end off from cliffhangers. I don't like that. You can keep a story going until the actual end. Um, I do believe that uh, my personal belief is we should have a biblical cinematic universe. We have superheroes that are from the Bible or make a cinematic universe from the Bible. Um, I don't know. I do know I'm gonna make waves. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take y'all along. I'm gonna take y'all along for that journey. But as I grow, as I uh, develop my characters and develop this channel, um, I just hope to one. I gotta get an intro. Gotta do that for my videos. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna end the, I'm gonna end the stream, y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Um, I'm gonna get on, try to get my stuff done. And uh how do we get Pacific Rim into the MonsterVerse? Mm. Yeah. Uh I, I'm a I'm a I'ma keep that. Um uh, I'm a nah, nah, I'm uh, Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim got to be, um, Pacific Rim got to stay over to itself. I'm, I'm going to let him deal with kaijus, but I don't want him, I, nah, I don't want him facing Godzilla because Godzilla going to basically tear him in half. As soon as he hits with that atomic blast, he's done for. Nah, nah, no. What I need Pacific Rim to do is continue with the story that I got. Pacific, uh, stick to where they they go to the, um, the, uh, um, the, Aliens that come from the depths of the ocean, have them open up that portal and they go whoop they tell. Tell them they come to them. But I don't want them to be in a situation to where, uh, like we had with, um, like we had with uh, Independence Day 2, Resurgence, to where, of course, yes, we took that alien technology, we integrated with our technology, we made a futuristic military, we had the UN come in together, we had the Earth finally come together on one united front. And protect our whole entire planet. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, keep Pacific Rim over at Pacific Rim. Keep them in that little world where they're facing monsters that come from the ocean. Um, one other franchise I, I believe if you guys go back and watch, it's nostalgic. It's from 2008. Uh, Jumper with Hayden Christensen and Samuel Jackson. That is one that I believe should come back. Also, Push. With Chris Evans and uh um uh oh shoot the dude from Blood Diamond. Those two movies came from an era where they had the black villain, but it was very good. The I want to see the worlds collide. That's what I want to see. I want to see a crossover between Jumper and Push. Those two are really good movies. And I recommend you guys go watch them. Um I it came out during what I like to call the uh the sci-fi era of film. Um, you had a whole bunch of stuff come out. Uh, you had Race to Witch Mountain, you had Jumper, you had Push, you had um, let's see what else did you have? You had oh, I am number four, that was also based on a book. And I really wish that they had created that series. I might have to go back and read those because that's a it's actually a young adult novel. That those movies that came out, like I am number four, Jumper, um. Those are based on young adult novels. Uh, the uh, also um, insurgent 
uh, the Hunger Games. Yeah, those were they came out during the uh, time when young adult novels were being made into movies, and the way that they did them made some mo made some money, because uh, I do believe that um, they're coming out actually this year, this month is the uh, the prequel movie to the regular Hunger Games storyline. So you have uh, Snow as a young man that's coming up into the uh, world of the Hunger Games series and Pan Am, and they're doing all that. And so, but yeah. But yeah, y'all, thank y'all for coming with me, uh, rock with me. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, I'm almost at 150. I'm trying to get there. Uh, might want to get at 200 by the end of this year. Um, I'll be going live again uh, when I get back from New York on Tuesday. And yeah, I'm going to be recording and dropping some new uh, content. Might have some special guests. And yeah, thank y'all. Love y'all. Peace.